Hello and welcome to another video. This process video slash tutorial is slightly unorganized but I hope that I can give you some tips and useful insight into making clay charms and jewelry and glazing it all with UV resin. So let's get started. So I'm a big ideas person. I have a lot of ideas and very little follow through on all my ideas. So the first step for me is to jot down all my ideas so that I have a framework for when I actually get started on the project. So I worked with air drying clay and I'll leave the link to all the art materials I used in the description below. Um, mostly what I did was cut out circles. I didn't have a, a cutter so I used the lid to a random bottle that I had lying around and then I poked holes in it with a toothpick um, but here's my first tip if I do this again instead of poking a hole with a toothpick I'm going to insert uh, a metal hook into it while it's still wet because um, I think the hole I made wasn't big enough or something but in some of the pieces when I tried to put the metal hook to connect it to the earring hook uh, if this makes sense. It kind of broke the clay a bit even though I'd glazed it with UV resin so I think for a safer and it's kind of a, a cleaner look I'll just insert the metal hook directly into it while the clay is still wet. When I wasn't using the bottles to make a circle shape, I used my Stanley knife to cut out other shapes. Throughout this process, I was referring to my sketchbook that I showed before. So I was looking at it to see what kind of shapes I wanted to cut out and yeah, what kind of charms I wanted to make. And that helped me in this process figure out what I was actually doing. So once I cut things out with the uh, Stanley knife, I used some water, uh, I got some water on my fingers and smoothed out all the edges. After I finished shaping all my pieces, I left them to dry for about two weeks. Um, you can kind of tell if the air dry clay is dry, if it's all the same white colour. So after it was dry, I sanded all the pieces down to make them a lot smoother. And then I painted them all with a white gesso paint so that when I painted over with acrylic, uh, the paint would stick on the ceramic. So now I'm going to take you through my painting and glazing process. I've painted all the charms with acrylic paint and a lot of them have multiple layers of paint. Um, as you can see here, this is my first layer of the orange that I made and then when it dried I put on a second layer and then when it dried I put on a third layer and that's just standard so as you can imagine all of these charms and earrings and stuff took a very long time so for most of the clay pieces i'd experimented in my sketchbook with how i wanted to paint them and how you know i wanted them to look in the end so this helped me when i was actually painting on the clay pieces to kind of figure out what i was doing I was still a bit lost. I don't know if you can tell here, but I'm just messing around. I don't really know what I'm doing, but it turned out well. This one turned out well. Others, not so much. Um, I think as artists, well, as an artist, sometimes I, I only want to show the things that turn out well. And if I'm posting on um, Instagram or my website, it's kind of, like a portfolio for me so I want to show my best work um, so that you know when people are reaching out to me 
for commission work or to hire me as an illustrator, I can point them to the things that I've done well. And so that's why I usually post my best work online and don't post the things that don't work out well. Um, but yeah, I think it's important to remember that everyone has artwork that is just ugly and that just happens sometimes um, and you need to, I guess, give permission to yourself to create bad artwork and, and not um, look at other people's best of their best and think, oh wow, they've never done anything ugly because everyone does. Um, so yeah, I think for me also with acrylics, like the first layer I'm like, oh, and then the second layer I'm like, ah. But by the third layer, I'm like, okay, this is coming together. So maybe a, a tip for if you're painting with acrylics or just painting in general is layering. It's, it's a big game changer. So in this third layer, I'm adding more highlights and more shadows and kind of evening out the um, brush strokes a bit. So uh, another thing for the orange is that I made leaves to go on top of them as you can see in the oranges in the background there. I kind of kept them there as those are the first few that I made so I kept them there as a reference for how to paint the other ones and I have the same process with the leaves so about three layers of paint and in the third layer that's when I really add the, the highlights and the shadows. Another tip for painting on these clear pieces is to stick them on some blue tack and then stick the blue tack to a piece of paper. So this lets me paint on the sides as well and then I can also pick it up and, and look at it from different angles. And once the paint is all dry, I am ready to glaze with UV resin. Another detail that I've added to these oranges is to put some highlight lines with my Posca pens on the oranges and on the leaves. So for the UV resin equipment, I got a kit online that came with um, few bottles of UV resin and a um, UV light. I think it's like a nail polish kit but I mean it works. So the little white thing you can see in the corner that's the light and once I put the resin on the clay piece I put it under the light and just click the button and I have to click it a few times um, because it doesn't dry in one go. It says it will dry in like a minute, but it takes like 20 minutes <laughs> for it to dry. Here is where I will share all of my UV resin tips. This was my first time using any kind of resin. Um, I think when it's the first time you do something, there's a lot of learning that needs to be done so it was really really good to do that I watched so many YouTube videos like with tips and stuff but I think the biggest thing is to actually do it and and learn from experience but I did get some really good tips from people online so I'll share some of those and also some of my own that um, I didn't hear anyone say so the first thing is it's really important to wear a mask 
and to be in a well ventilated area. Um, I think the resin is like toxic to breathe in, <laughs> so that's not very good. Um, but I think if you wear a mask and and you're in the in open space and and stuff like that, then I think that helps. When I was working on these, I couldn't do it for more than like an hour or so because if I spent longer working on these charms, then I would get a headache from the the fumes. <laughs> that sounds really bad, but I mean, I think in the end I was fine. So I guess that's number one rule, safety and maybe don't do it for too long, especially if you're feeling the effects of it, of breathing in the, the resin. I don't even know what I'm breathing in, but <laughs> definitely there's a strong smell um, and I think it, this is quite common um, from my research, but second rule is, and I know this probably sounds really obvious, but don't do it in daylight. <laughs> mm. So I think like the first few times I tried to do it during the day because I did these um, in like January, February and so that's winter time and when I was opening the windows and making sure everything was like in the open I was getting so cold <laughs> I'm like basically sitting out there in the freezing cold air oh, right. and so I was like okay I have to just do it when it's sunny and then I would put the the resin on and I didn't think it would harden so quickly but I put it on and immediately it would get hard and I was like oh yeah, so ruin quite a few pieces that way. So yeah, my tip is don't do this in direct sunlight. I think daylight is okay because I did it in times where like it was really cloudy and you couldn't see the sun at all and that was fine. So yeah, just avoid direct sunlight. My other tip is to use a heat gun, which I'm using or a hairdryer if you don't have a heat gun. This gets rid of the bubbles and it also makes it easier to spread the resin around. So in terms of how to spread the resin around, first I tried using a toothpick as that's what I saw in some other videos but that didn't really work for me very well. It was quite hard um, to spread it evenly and it was also really slow. Um, so I used a paintbrush, but this was hard because I could never clean the paintbrush enough. I scrubbed it with um, soap and, and all these things that, you know, I saw on the internet to help you clean paintbrushes with resin on them, but they could never get clean and, and then they would harden. Um, so what I'm using here is a paintbrush that has um, hardened resin on it. It's definitely easier with a soft paintbrush, but yeah, a hardened paintbrush still works. So my basic process is just to apply some UV resin and then warm it up with the heat gun and then spread it around with my paintbrush and then maybe warm it up again or um, get rid of the bubbles with my heat brush and then spread it around until, until, I, until it's good and then I'll put it under the UV light. So for the backs of my brooches I'll stick on a brooch hook and the UV resin is also like a glue, like when it gets hard, it's, it's like a glue, so I don't need to put any extra glue on it. I just put some UV resin on the back and then stick the, um, the pin where I want it to go. And then I have to, this is quite challenging because 
the resin is wet and then when I stick the pin on it can kind of move around so I have to very quickly put it under the UV light and then pretty much immediately like if I put it under the light for a few seconds after that I can't move the pin anymore um, so once it's under the light it's under the light and if it is not really in the right place uh, it is what it is and here is the same process from a different angle I have all the clay pieces that need to dry under my light and I have all the ones that I still need to uh, glaze in front of me and here is the direct sunlight that I'm talking about uh, it was getting pretty bad and I was in the middle of the process so I didn't want to stop um, so I put up an umbrella to shield me from the direct sunlight and that worked it worked but I had to make sure I um, did everything very quickly because um, yeah, the sunlight did affect it a bit. So here is the finished orange piece. I really like how it turned out and I think the glazing really makes a difference. So even though resin was kind of hard to work with and it was an extra step for sure, it's definitely worth it. So now that I've kind of tried to explain everything, I'm going to just show you the footage of, of some of the other creations that I painted and the process with those. It's all the same. I just thought it was interesting to see more than one thing get made. So yeah, I hope you enjoy.
thank you so much for watching this video i really hope that these tips have been helpful for you and if you have any questions suggestions or comments please let me know down below all of these pieces are available on my etsy shop the link is in the description below so if you're interested in any of them please take a look and that is it for today have a lovely week and i'll see you soon